I will now talk about a very important structure with, with that we call matrices. And matrices, I mean, all of you, I'm sure, have seen matrices in some other course. And they are rectangular arrays, okay? An array that have some rows and some columns. And they are powerful representation that we use them when we write computer programs, because you can define two-dimensional arrays to store objects and make your algorithm operate on that matrix. They are used for capturing relations, usually binary relations. So if there is a relation that relates two sets of items or elements of the same set, we use matrices to represent them. There's a very important uh, structure or representation structure in computer science that's known as graphs that have nodes and edges. Matrices are one of the way to represent graphs as well. So they are very powerful, uh, very powerful uh, structure that is, is used in many applications in computer science and in discrete mathematics. There is, of course, matrices and their operations that one learns in algebra where one talks about, about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and so on. But that's a different emphasis from what we are going to be talking about here. Here we are going to be talking about matrices as a structure for representing data and, and the type of operations we can do on them. So a matrix, as I said, it's a rectangular array of numbers. When it, when it has M rows and N columns, we say it is an M by N matrix. It's important to think, uh, to, to talk a little bit about notations. When we want to talk, when we want to use a name for the matrix, we usually use capital letters like big A, big B, and so on, and we make them bold faced. It's not going to be easy when I am writing here on the, on the, on the slide to keep making them bold face, but please keep in mind that when we are type things, we make it in bold face. Interestingly, when we refer to the entry in the matrix, we use the small letter of the same capital letter. Okay, so if, if the matrix is called capital A, the entries in it, we refer to them as little a, small a, with the indices ij to denote that we are talking about the, the entry in row i, column j. And the last point I want to say here is that we use this notation that we say if you use this notation of little i uh, sub with index ij, we can put it in square bracket to denote the same thing as capital A. So if I'm talking about capital A, or if I put these square brackets with little a ij, I am talking about the same thing, about the same matrix. Okay, so let's see an example of a matrix. So this is a matrix here, and uh, two, one, three, four, one, 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 zero, one, zero, one. Okay, so this is a matrix here. If you look at it, this matrix has three rows and four columns. Therefore, this is a three by four matrix. Okay, three by four matrix. I can look at element, let's say, A11 one, one here. What, what is the element in row one and column one? This is row one, row two, row three. This is column one, column two, column three, column four. So little a one one is the entry in row one, column one, it is two. What is a three, three? It is the entry in row three, column three, which is the zero, okay? What is the entry a one, four? It's the entry in row one, column four, which is four, and so on, okay? So this is how we represent or denote matrices with the capital A for the name of the matrix and for, for little, little a, the, the small letters for the entries themselves. Please keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with a matrix that has one row or a matrix that has one column. This is, this one here is a completely fine matrix. One, two, one, two, five, okay? This is a matrix that has one row and five columns. So B is one by five matrix, okay? It can also be a column matrix like this, two, two, three. It has three rows and one column. C is a three by one matrix, okay? An important uh, type of matrices is what we call square matrices. Again, when we talk about representing graphs, for example, usually the, the way we represent them, or one of the way we represent them is using a square matrix. 
A square matrix is a matrix that has the same number of rows and columns. Okay, so I can have a one by one square matrix, you know, five. This is a one by one square matrix that has one row, one column, it has one element in it. I can talk about three by three a square matrix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a three by three square matrix, okay? So a square matrix is a matrix that has the same number of rows, the same number of columns. We call it square matrix because it's square. It has the same, the same uh, size of the sides, okay? When we, when we talk about, we always care about equality. Right? When we have two graphs, we want to know whether they are equal graphs. When we have matrices, we want to know if they are equal matrices. If we have two relations, we want to know if they are equal relations and so on. So when we have two matrices, what does it mean for them to be equal? Someone give you two matrices and ask you, are they equal? Two matrices are equal if they both have exactly the same number of rows, if they both have exactly the same number of columns, and each entry, the entry IG in one equals to the entry IG in the other, for every i, for every j. It's not easy for me to write an interesting example because I have to write the matrix twice. So if a is two, three, one, four, b, for b to be equal to this, it has to have two rows, it has to have two columns. Entry a one, one has to be the same. Entry one, two has to be the same. Entry two, one has to be the same. Entry two, two has to be the same. These two are equal, okay? If the two matrices have different number of rows, one has n rows, one has m column, m, uh, m rows, they are not equal. If n is not, and m are not equal. If they have two different numbers of columns, they are not equal. If they have the same number of rows, the same number of columns, and they differ in at least one entry, ij, they are not equal. We can also take two matrices and sum them or subtract them. The two matrices have to be of the same dimensions or the same number of rows and the same number of columns. Okay, so if you wanna sum two matrices, they have to have the same number of rows, they have to have the same number of columns. And you sum them by summing the corresponding entries in each of them. You subtract them by subtracting the corresponding entries in each of them. So if we look at A as two, one, three, and one, zero, one. B has to be two by three matrix. So one, zero, zero, two, two, two. Then if I look at A plus B, it will be a two by three matrix. Entry one, one is going to be A one, one plus B one, one. So we need to, for entry one, one, we take A one, one, and B one, one, we sum them, that's three. For one, two, we take this one from here, and zero, one plus zero is one, three plus zero is three, one plus two is three, zero plus two is two, one plus two is three. This is the sum. Subtraction, the same story. Two minus one is one, one minus zero is one, three minus zero is three, one minus two is minus one, zero minus two is minus two, one minus two is minus one, this is A minus B, okay? Please pay, just pay attention to the fact that they have to be the same number of rows, the same number of columns. Think when you write a computer program, if you try to, to sum two arrays, and one array has five elements, one array has seven elements, you're gonna run into a problem if you try to, to add some element in one array and go to the index in the other array, you don't find anything there, or the array is not defined, okay? So the arrays have to be the same number of rows, same number of columns for us to be add, but for us to be able to add them or subtract them. The product of two matrices is a little bit more, more involved how we define it. So here we, the matrices do not, are not necessarily of the same dimensions. However, if you wanna multiply A by B, A by B, A on the left and B on the right, the number of columns in A, the number of columns in A has to be the number of rows in B, okay? The number of rows in A, the number of columns in B do not have to be the same. So A is, has M rows, B has N columns, M and N do not have to be the same. However, the number of columns in A, the sum number of rows in B have to be the same for us to be able to take the product like that. 
So if we have these two matrices, one has M rows, K columns, one, the second one has K rows, N columns, then we can take the product of these A times B, where the IJ entry in this new matrix, C, is we take, we basically multiply the i row in, in matrix A by the jth column in matrix B. And this is why we need the same number of columns in A and rows in B. So if you have not seen, if you have not seen this notation before here, the, the sigma, what this is saying, Cij, what this is saying, it is Ai1, B1, J. So look at L, L loops from one to K. When L is one, when L is one, this product here is A1, is AI1, B1, J, which is what I wrote. Then L becomes two, then we have AI2, B2, J. Then L becomes three, AI3, B3, J, and so on. L goes all the way to k, right? It's between one and k. So the last element in this sum is a, i, k, and b, k, j. So this is what this summation or the sigma denotes here, is that we have the sum of k terms. Each term yeah, with, with indexed by l is the a, i, l times b, l, j. So if I have two matrices and I need to make them small to make my life easy here. So the first one can be, let's say, uh, two by, by three, I mean, this is maybe small enough, one, two, one, zero, one, zero. If this has, has, is two by three, B, for me to be able to multiply A by B, B has to have three rows, okay? So let's have one, two, one, and let's actually make it three by one. So this A is a matrix two by three, B is three by one, so I can multiply them. I can define AB, okay? So AB is going to be two by one matrix. It is two by one. It is the M from A and the N from B. It is going to be a two by one matrix. Okay, so it's going to have really two entries here. What are they? The first entry is that I need to multiply the, this one here I need to multiply the first row from A by the first column from B. So if I need to multiply this by this, okay? So you take one, you take the, the first element from the row and the first element from the column, you multiply them. One by one is one. Then I add to that the second element from that row times the second element from that column, two times two, it's four. The third element from that row, which is one, times the third row from that column, which is one, it's one. So one plus four plus one is six. So this element here, the first element in this matrix AB is six. Now I go to the second element, which is the element in row two, column one in AB, and I say, what's the value there? Now I multiply the second row from A by the first column from B. Now it is zero times one is zero, plus one times two is two, plus zero times one is zero, this is two. And this is the product matrix that we get. So that the multiplication of A, the product of A and B, is this matrix AB that has two rows and one column. The first entry there, to row one, column one is six. The second entry, which is row two, column one is two. Now, please notice that if AB is defined, it doesn't mean that BA is defined, okay? So AB, the product is not commutative. AB does not have to be equal to BA. And even sometimes it's worse than that. You can multiply A by B, but you might not be able to multiply B by A. Okay, so for example, if you look at, at the AB that I have here on this slide, B has, has one column. Two have, A has two rows. I cannot multiply B times A here, okay? I cannot multiply B times A in this case. Another, a very important type of matrix that we use it usually as a, as a boundary case, okay? When we want to talk about, especially when we start talking about raising matrices to power, is what we call the identity matrix. 
the identity matrix is a square matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix that has the same number of rows and columns where all the elements on the, on the diagonal are one, every other entry is zero. All the elements on the diagonal are one, every other entry is zero. We can define an identity matrix of, of, of dimension one, which is a one by one matrix. We can have it of dimension two, of dimension three, and so on. And we denote it usually by I sub N. So I sub one is the identity matrix with one row and one column. It will be one. I two is the identity matrix of two rows and two columns. All the entries on the diagonal are one. Everything else is zero. I three is a three by three matrix. Every entry on the diagonal is one. Everything else is zero. Okay, and so on. Then we can define it all the way to I n. It will be an n by n matrix, n rows, n columns. All the entries on the diagonal are one and so on. Everything else here is zero. These are all zeros, okay? This is the identity matrix and you will see a place where we will use it uh, very soon. Okay? When we talk about the power of matrices, you can take the matrix itself and multiply it by itself any number of times you want. So we defined product of matrices. So now if you give me a matrix that's square, the matrix is square, it's an N by N matrix. I can say multiply it by itself twice, three times, four times, and so on. And this is how we define the powers of matrices. So A to the first is A. A to the second is A times A. A to the seventh is A times A times A seven times. A to the zero, A to the zero, just like when we raise numbers to power zero, if you take five to the power zero, it's one, right? In the case of matrices, if you take the matrix and you raise it to power zero, you get one. But one is not the matrix. What we get is what we call, but what we get is the identity matrix. Okay, so if you have, if you have uh, any matrix A, let's say you take A is, you know, two one one two. This is a square matrix, so I can take its powers. So A to the zero for this matrix, it is one one zero zero. Okay, it is the identity matrix of size, of size two. Okay, two by two matrix. A to the one. It's nothing but A itself. 2, 1, 1, 2. A to the second, it is A times A. And I can compute them here, which is basically 2, 1, 1, 2 by 2, 1, 1, 2. And I take now, I multiply the first row by the first column. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 plus 1 is 1. This is 5. First row by the second column. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is two, this is four. Then the second row by the first column, one times two is two, two times one is two, that's four. Then the second row by the second column, one times one is one, two times two is, is four, this is five, okay? And then you can take A3, which is really A times A times A, but we have already, and this is A squared times A, but we have already computed A squared, which is five, four, four, five, and now I can multiply it by 2, 1, 1, 2, and so on, okay? So this is the power of matrices. But please keep in mind that the matrix has to be square, otherwise it's, you are gonna run into, into problems multiplying it to get powers. Transpose of a matrix is a very simple concept. If I give you a matrix, you just interchange the rows and columns in that matrix, you get the transpose, okay? So here it's written formally what it means to have a transpose is that if I, give you, if I give you an M by N matrix, M rows, N columns, what you give me back is a matrix that has N rows, M columns. So you take the, if the first row in, your, in the matrix I gave you, you make it the first column. I give you, you take the second row in the matrix I gave you, you make it the second column, and so on. Okay, so if A is 2, 1, 2, 4, 1, 0, 5, 2, so A is a matrix of two by four. The transpose of A, A to the T, it is going to be a matrix that's four by two, okay? So it's going to have four rows and two columns. What is the first column in A T? It's going to be the first row, just make it a, a column. 
So I take the first row in A and I turn it into a column. So the first A be the first element in the column. The second element in the row becomes the second element in the column. Third row, third element in the row becomes the third element in the column, and so on. Then I take the second row in A and I make it a second column. One, zero, five, two. Okay, so this is the transpose of a matrix. And the transpose, doing this simple operation, is very important in many applications. Symmetric matrix is a matrix that equals its transpose. So if you take a matrix and transpose it, you get the same matrix, therefore it, it's going to be symmetric. So if you look at this here, I'm saying matrix A is symmetric if A equals that uh, transpose. For the two matrices to be equal, as I said before, they have to have the same number of rows, the same number of columns. So if the matrix A is M, A is M by N, the second, the A by A to T, A, T, a transpose is going to be N by M. So if A is M by N, then A, T, it is N by M. But for me to be able to check if A equals A, T, we know that both matrices have to be of the same dimension. So M has to be equal to N, N has to be equal to M. What this tells me is that A must be square, okay? The matrix is A, A must be square. We do not talk about symmetry of matrices that are not square. So you can think always about when you wanna test if a matrix is square, is symmetric, it has to be square. So what is an example of a symmetric matrix? So let's take a matrix that's three by three. If this is one, two, one, for it to be symmetric, the first row has to be equal to the first column. So these have to be two, one here, okay? This, if I put two, three, one here, the second row has to be equal to the second column. So if the two equals to two, three is to three, this must be one here. The third row and I can make it, the third row and the third column have to be the same. So if I make this seven, this is a symmetric matrix. So if you look at this, you will notice if I look at transpose, I make the first row as the first column. I make the second row as the, the second column, two, three, one. I make the third row as the third column. And you will notice that A and A, T are exactly the same matrix. So this is a symmetric matrix, okay? So if you look at it, this symmetric matrix, if you look at the diagonal, you will see that across the diagonal, it is mirror image of each other. So the two as the two, the one equals to the one, the one equals to the one, and so on. So it is really, mirror image across the diagonal. The last thing I wanna mention here, which matters to us in computer science, is the notion of zero, one, or Boolean matrices. And this is really not, not a special, <coughs> not a new type of matrices, but it's a matrix where all the entries are zeros and ones. We will see them in many applications. For example, when we represent graphs, we will have zero to denote that uh, there is no edge between two nodes. We will have one to denote that there is an edge between two nodes. If we use matrices to represent relations, then I can have zero in the entry that corresponds to A and B to say that A and B are not in relation. I can have one to say that A and B are in the relation and so on. So Boolean matrix, for example, A is zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one. This is a Boolean matrix. Okay, so now if I have to, if I have Boolean matrices, let's say, another, let me try another matrix here, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. If I have two Boolean matrices of the same dimensions, the same number, the same number of rows, the same number of columns, I can actually take their conjunction. So if I can take, for example, A and B, and basically, you take the conjunction, you take the conjunction between every two corresponding entries here, okay? Because they are of the same dimensions, I can look at AIJ, I can look at BIJ, and I take the conjunction of the two. Treat the zeros as false, the ones as true. So if I look at, at this one here, zero and one, then here it is going to be zero and one, okay? So this is going to be zero. Okay, so false and true is false. Then if I look at you know, this entry here, 
this is going to be 0 and 1, it is 0. If I look at this entry, 1 and 0, it's the same story, 1 and 0, this is 0, and so on, okay? So we do this here. So what I will get from the conjunction of these two matrices, 0 and 1 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, 1 and 1, 1 here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This will be the conjunction. If I want a disjunction, it's the same story, but you replace it by OR, okay? 0 or 1 is 1, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, 1 or 1 is 1, 0 or 1, 1 here, this is 0, 1, 1. This is the disjunction, okay? And then we have of the, the power. I can actually talk about the, the, the product, sorry. The product, as before, has to be two matrices of the same of the same uh, uh, the same number. If we want to take the product, the Boolean product, which we denote by circle and a dot in it, in LaTeX it is O dot backslash O dot. Is I want to take this, then I get the matrix. For example, C, A has to if A is M by N, sorry M by K, just to stick with the same notation, then B has to be K by N. And we just replace the product or the multiplication by conjunction, and we replace the, the summation by disjunction, okay? So if I'm looking at, so what would be Cij? Remember that, if I, then I will have L between one and K. The, so, sorry, it's not the summation. We don't have summation here. We will have the, we will have the, disjunction okay the disjunction from l between 1 and k of a i l and b l j okay so what this is saying is that c i j it's really a i 1 and b 1 j or a i 2 this is or here a i 2 and b to j or all the way to a i k and b k j okay so if i give you two matrices two boolean matrices the first one is two by two by three one zero one zero one one if this is a and i give you b it has to be three by something so let's take three by two uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So now I can, and I want to multiply them, Boolean multiplication. Okay. So the, what's the first entry here? The first entry is going to be this row in double quote multiplied by this. But again, it's not multiplication here. I will take 1 and 1. This is this entry here, one and one, or the second entry zero, and the second entry is one, zero and one, or this one here, the third entry and the third entry, sorry. So this was one, one, zero, one, and this is, let's say here, one. Suppose this was one, okay? So this will be the third entry by the third entry, which is one and one, okay? So we have this, and this will be one and one is one, zero and one is zero, one and one is one. If you take the disjunction of all of them, it's one. So the first entry here is one. And we repeat the same thing for the other entries. If I wanna look at the first row and the second column, it is I take the first row from A, the second column from B, the second column from B is all zeros, so the conjunction with all the other elements is going to be zeros. I will have zero here, okay? Then I look at the second row from A and the first column from B. I have some one and one. It will be one. You can actually do it on your own. This will be one for the, th for the second uh, element in the second, if the element in the second row and the, and the second column is going to be zero, zero. And this will be the... This will be the Boolean, the Boolean uh, product here. If we, we can also extend the, no, the notion of, of uh, the, the, pro, the 
the power of, of, the, of a Boolean matrix. Here, we, we just use the square bracket in the super, in the, in the uh, it, we say a to the square bracket of R instead of a to the R to denote that we are taking Boolean product here when we are calculating the, the power. So here it's the same story. If you look at a to the zero, it's still going to be i to the n because i to the n, it's a matrix of zeros and ones anyway. So it is fine. i to the n is a, I n is a Boolean matrix. If you look at a1, it is a itself. But if you look at a2 here, the, then it is a Boolean product with a. If you look at a3, it is a to the two and Boolean product with a and so on. Okay, so it's the same thing as think of product as the same thing, the Boolean product as the same thing as product, but replace the sum by disjunction, replace the, the multiplication by conjunction. And when we look at the Boolean power of a zero one matrix, it's exactly the same as before, but here in terms of, of multiplying two matrices, we do the Boolean multiplications of these two matrices. Okay?